Genesis 7-2 Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Now most people that believe in this fairy tale version of Genesis 7-2, the story of Noah's Ark, takes that at face value. And this face value is the English version, the English translations. And any learned person would be seeking deeper knowledge as to what's going on. We should be able to all agree that there was no such boat, ship, that was called an ark, the size of the Titanic, built of wood and asphalt, by some guy that his deity told him to do so. But there was, and it was in the story indicated, that there was a religious ark built, meaning a religious box, meaning a sanctuary. The waters, the flood that was coming was mayhem, the word for waters in the ancient language was mayhem, as we understand mayhem, which is the same as chaos. And what was coming was a deluge, a flood of mayhem by the warlords. Why? Well, I think it's obvious the way that the story goes was the warlords were unhappy of the behavior of all the people in that area, except for Noah, or I should say Nucha or Nacha, which Nucha or Nacha is the remnant of the serpent Nachash, which was the serpent identified earlier in Genesis that was hanging around the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Nacha or Noah was that remnant. He was the religion that came from the Garden of Eden that was known as the serpent. And it was the serpent religion. So if you look at the underlying words that were translated in Genesis 7-2, you should gain an understanding that they were not actual animals that were brought onto the ark, but they were people. They were religious people. And as we know how tribes behave, or we should know how tribes behave. I don't think we do actually do, okay? So I guess I'm just going to have to tell you how tribes behave. Well, look at a powwow, for example. The Native Americans that have powwows. Look at the Alaskan Native Americans that have powwows. They dress up. They dress up as birds. They dress up as... What do they dress up as? They'll dress up as fish in Alaska. They'll dress up as bears. They'll dress up as different types of animals and creatures and stuff in order to perform a ceremony that's associated with that animal or creature or whatnot. That was being discussed that no one was supposed to gather all these different types of religions, religious people who were what you would call worshiping animals and creatures of the earth. Now, if you look in Genesis 2, like I said, you look at the word clean. The word clean came from H2889, which is typically pronounced Tahor. And it is actually Tha, Ha, Ra, and means snake, spirit, person. The word beasts, H929, is Bama. And Bama means eight, excuse me, B H M H, household to reveal chaotic spirit. So it was the clean beasts were the snake spirit people with the household to reveal chaotic spirits. Now if you continue on, you read about the unclean 
beasts, whatever. What do you want to call them? Beasts, animals. You know, the word goy, the word goy means pack of animals. The word goy is used in the scriptures to identify nations. Now, nowadays, the Jews or the Hebrews, they like to poke fun at what they call the Gentiles or anybody but themselves. And they say, aha, they go, they're packs of animals, they're nothing, they're, you know, to be looked at as animals. When in their scriptures, it also identifies that their nation known as Israel was also goy, which was pack of animals. And make no mistake about it, in the ancient times... Just as any other warrior class or group of tribes to be called an animal was a good thing. It was a warrior type thing that they were animals. They were warriors. They were vicious and not to be messed with. So make no mistake about it. There are reasons why these names and titles are associated with certain things within the scriptures. And basically, you don't understand them because your religious leaders failed you. Your religion over hundreds and thousands of years has failed you. That's why you don't understand. And the reason is because at the end of the day, the finger points at them as the problem, them as the serpent, them as the Satan, them as the devils. If you look and understand what those words actually means. But you probably don't want to. By this point in time, you're probably full of excuses. But let's continue on. In that, in that writing of Genesis 7-2, that not clean. I'm going to pull this back out. I'm going to use my computer right now. I'm going to pull this back up. It says, and of beasts that are not clean. So beasts. Beasts. Obama. That's funny. We've got a President Obama, don't we? The household to reveal chaotic spirit. That, and the word that was translated as that was H834, which was Asherah, Ashara, which is first fruit person or people. So the first fruit person or peoples, which we identify that with tithing. So the people of tithings. The word not came translated from H3808, which is lo or la, which is L-A, which is tongue leader. So the beasts, the household to reveal chaotic spirit, the first fruit people, the tongue leader, and then the last word in that series was clean, H2889, tahor or Thahara, which again is snake spirit person. So that first group of people was the clean beast. The snake spirit people of household to reveal chaotic spirit. The second group of people was the first fruit people. The tongue leaders of the snake spirit people. Are you getting a grasp for what was really going on? What was really going on was there was a sanctuary that Noah built out of gopher wood. He waterproofed it from the weather with asphalt. Hey, that's a nice, nice, that's a nice place to live out of compared to living in tents. Okay, it's that simple. And in that sanctuary, he brought different groups or different portions of local tribes and religious groups in the area. And I just identified those groups that he brought in in order to, well, do what the religious groups do. Farm them animals. <laughs>